couple of days ago I did a video comparing my air fryer against my travel buddy which is a 12 volt oven and I mentioned during that video that I'm going to try a similar test with a few variations but I'm going to cook something different so I'm going to cook those meat pies those meat pies that I showed you in that video over two or three days ago. So we're going to compare these two air fryer and we trail 12 volt travel buddy with those meat pies that I showed you. So there's two. So it's now 9.30. So I'm going to give it at least two hours. I'm going to cook it the same as I normally do. I'm not going to change that part of it. So I've got the travel buddy connected to my kick-ass battery down here just off the side. I had it on charge yesterday so it's fully 100% charged. And later on with about half an hour to go, around about probably quarter past 11 or so because I would think the pie is going to take about half an hour to cook maybe even less I'm going to start cooking it on the air fryer and then we're going to compare how much power consumption is used to cook that pie and this one here compared to that one and we'll try to get it so they're cooked similar because that test that I did the other day Okay, so I've worked out that this one here went through 18 amps, but the sausage roll wasn't cooked. If you remember, I had to give it another blast of three, four minutes in the air fryer. The air fryer cooked in 20 minutes, but I could have actually cooked that in probably a couple of minutes less. So 17, 18 minutes. And that went through, I think we worked out around about 20, uh, 20 amps, 20 amps. Oh, I've got a brain went blank then. So that worked out around about 20 amps. And it was even overcooked just slightly. Although I didn't mind it like that. Like I said, I'm probably going to cook it the same uh, next time. Maybe try a minute less, see how it goes, and then try a minute less again. Now, I've never cooked a meat pie in this one before. So this is going to be a first. So you're going to watch me cook it for the first time. I'm guessing half an hour, but it could be even less. Now the meat pies are going to be frozen, similar to what the sausage rolls are. So in fact the meat pies are right in here in my fridge, so I'll just grab them now. So there's two meat pies in here and in fact it is 9.33 so I'm going to start cooking one of these meat pies right now. So set on 200 the maximum and we'll set the timer for two hours. They're pretty simple these to set up as you can see how easy that was. I didn't hit the record button. I literally did about 15-20 minutes of talking in front of the camera. <laughs> so, <laughs> take two, let's start again. Now, two days ago, I, post, I can't believe what it. Two days ago, I posted a video comparing 12 volt oven, in my case the Trouble Buddy, to my Taste the Difference, which is the brand air fryer that I bought at JB Hi Fi for $50. Wonderful air fryer, as you can see. $50, guys. This thing here costs $240 plus, and actually even costs more than that, so we'll talk about that. In case you guys that didn't watch the video two days ago, naughty naughty. So I'll show, I will show you what we're cooking. 
We've got the baked provisions. Remember I showed you that brand? They were sausage rolls. And these are steak pies. So there was two in here. There's one inside here that's been cooking for the last 20 minutes. So we're going to put this back here so we don't affect our test. Because I'm cooking it from frozen. And I'm going to want to cook it from frozen in the air fryer as well. Oh, loving that fridge, guys. Love, love, love that fridge. Cannot tell you. That's starting to warm up just a little bit more. It's making a good armrest at the moment. So until it gets too hot, we'll keep using this as an armrest. <laughs> but I know I've still got a fair bit of time before I need to move my arm because these things take forever to heat up. So if I didn't have that pie in there, it will take probably 40, about half an hour before it will heat up. And then I'll put the pie in there. I could have done that. I could have heated up first, a half an hour, and then put the pie in. But honestly, guys, I haven't found any difference. And plus, the reason I do this is when I'm driving on the highway, I don't want to have to pull over every half an hour or so to deal with this. All right? So pull up, turn it on, drive half an hour, pull over again. Meanwhile, all those slow cars that you've passed by then are all going to pass you. And then you'll pull up while well, you're pulled over just to put the pie in and then get back on the road. And then you've got to follow, <laughs> you've got to pass all those old cars again. Now, for you guys that are living in a more built up area with your, you know, two, three, four lane highways, even up to five lane highways, you know, you've got no problems. You, you just drive past them. But here where I live, it's more of a country town. It's a track, roads are more like a goat track. Not a lot of opportunities to overtake these slow vehicles. And when I mean that's very slow, people drive very slow when you get in the country area here. If you've got a speed limit of 60, they'll sit on 40, 45. If you've got a speed limit of 100, they tend to sit on about 80. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I like to, I used to pull over, boom, turn it on, put the buy in, drive, and then two hours. Because generally I like to every two, two and a half hours. And that's what they say you should, every two, two and a half hours. You should pull over and have a bit of a break and a walk around. And it makes a big difference if you're driving long distance. So every two hours pull over to have a break, I don't mind, but not every half hour. So that's why I use this method. I didn't explain that before. What we're going to do now, I know from experience, it takes about two hours. And that's usually while I'm driving. And there's a bit difference there, I'm going to talk about that. I explained all this before, but I'm going to have to explain it again, silly me. Okay, so what am I talking about? Right, generally with these, the higher the voltage, to a certain extent, I don't like too many volts, but the higher you can put in, put the voltage in this, the better they cook, the hotter they get. So you can buy these, I don't know what you call them, they're not an inverter, but they're like a little generator or something. I don't know. They've got a name to it. I cannot remember what they're called. They're something like $80. So you plug it into a 12 volt battery and then it boosts that up to 13.6 volts or so. So instead of 12 point, like in this case, I've got a fully charged kick ass battery there. It's 100% fully charged. I had a look at the meter and it's sitting on 12.6. So fully charged and that's 12.8. So this is drawing about two, this has dropped the voltage down by about 0.2. Now it still works pretty good at 12.6, but it does work better. So it may take a little bit longer. Hence why I started cooking this pie at 9.30 this morning. So that gives me two and a half hours to have it ready by lunchtime. Because this one's going to be me mum's. Or that one there will be me mum's. So either one, she'll either have this one and I'll either have the other one there. But, so a lot of people are going to buy these things and spend an extra money buying these upscale 
things, whatever you call them. I can't even remember what they're called. It's something like $80, $89 plus freight. On top of $240, $260 or whatever these are to buy. So, and guys, there's no way in the world I'm going to go out and spend another 80 90 dollars probably near 100 dollars by the time i pay freight to get it to me door here to have this to cook better because <laughs> the money you should pay for these they should have those things already built into them that's my opinion they should have them already built into them because i've already spent enough money not only did i spend that 240 or whatever it was the cost the price of this they come with the cigarette lighter plug which I tell you what the first couple of times I used this travel buddy the cigarette plug got so hot that it was on the verge of mounting and I've seen many many photos of those cigarette lighter plugs mounting and I thought oh that must be because they're not using cable that's you know high enough and it's getting really hot at the joints but guys I had really thick cables go and do that cigarette plug and it's a short lead that was running to the battery guys and it was on the verge of melting so one day I was cooking with this I had to turn it off and quickly cut the line and put an Anderson plug on it so there you go I had to spend like seven or eight dollars for an Anderson plug to put on here which should come with an Anderson plug from day one cigarette lighter plug as far as I'm concerned it's just not something that you use in the four driving 12 volt industry anymore because they they've got a lousy connection so yeah it's just not a good connection it's particularly and you've got something that's drawing over 10 amps my mind boggles why they still sell these things with an Anderson with a cigarette lighter plug whereas there is other so-called copycats of these that have all that and not only that I spent an extra $45 $50 to get this front door insulated as well so if you watched that video two days ago and if you didn't uh uh, uh naughty naughty <laughs> but just in case you naughty ones that didn't watch that video two days ago I know it went pretty long but guys there's a lot of info in there if you're into stuff like this 12 volt 240 volt system I not only I don't just cook I don't don't just, I just didn't cook talk about sausage rolls for 40 minutes okay that video is not just talking about sausage rolls all right I spoke about the power consumption a lot I spoke about the system I'm setting up there how it's worked and so on so there's a lot of information there that you might find helpful for setting up your vehicle particularly if you want to go 240 volt uh, setup like I have and use a air fryer but right now we're going to talk a bit about the 12 volt side of it in these 12 volt ovens so I would have spent over $300 on this there's no way in the world I'm going to spend another 80 90 or probably close to hundred dollars by the time you pay freight so I can get this thing to work better that's going to be $400. That's crazy. Well, you could you could buy a half decent inverter for that price and then go up town and spend 50 bucks and get yourself a cheap air fryer. I don't know which one I'll be doing. <laughs> and 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 it's not like it's going to consume more power. You saw the test that I did the other day. In fact, that this here when I was cooking this the other day 18 amps consumed out of my battery and it wasn't even cooked this one here consumed the 20 amps and it was more than cooked it was like even overcooked so I could have got away probably only using 17 18 amps so in actual fact it's more efficient it took out less out of the battery than what this one does but of course you've got to have a decent lithium to do that as well now you don't have to spend a lot of money on the big lithium guys I've got the iTech 120x uh, which is more than enough to do the job if you if you only if you only want to run something like these you know like a, a little small three four liter 
air fryer like it's running here at the moment and a small inverter you know 1600 watts 1200 watts or whatever you don't need to spend a lot of money on the lithium you can get away with some of those cheap ones but just be wary of the discharge rate generally the cheap ones have got their BMS uh, is how they get them a lot cheaper their BMS is it's not up to scale so their BMS is not as good so hence they can't handle much incoming power so they can't charge them as fast and you can't discharge them get as much discharge them out, out of them and you know what I think of those batteries guys in my opinion I think anything less than 150 continuous draw just forget about it and you don't have to spend a lot of money to do that there's a few brands you know like there's a iTech world which is 150 continuous there's another one I think it's called Amptron is that what it's called Amptron that Andrew St. Pierre White uses they actually got a continuous they're, they're actually majority of the time they're actually cheaper battery than the iTech world I notice the iTech world occasionally goes on sale for between eight to nine hundred and now that sales ends now so it's up around I think they're around about what thousand dollars and I've seen them at times at twelve ninety nine crazy man crazy this battery is not worth twelve ninety nine in fact I wouldn't spend any more than eight hundred dollars for it myself and that's what I paid for this one I actually paid eight hundred nine dollars delivered to my door when I purchased it just, what about a year ago would it be a year that I've owned that no not quite probably close to a year I think I got it in June or something so what's it now March so what are we a nine months or something like that whatever that I've owned it now now it's been a good battery so far but if you saw some of my videos before it's not sufficient to continuously run my air roaster pro my bigger air fryer which is something like 13 14 or 15 liters or whatever thereabouts i don't know it could even be bigger but that thing's got the rotus there and it's big enough to cook a whole cake in it and so on uh, it, it is magic it is magic so that draws about 1550 watts Whereas this one, uh, where, which is around about your 160, 165 amps, the you know, give or take or whatever. Sometimes I've seen it as high as 170. Depends what the, all the other components are, is doing, which that battery can't handle. Hence why I then use solar panels. I have two solar panels, which is total 550 watts. So it usually puts in in the middle of the day, usually puts in about 40 plus amps into me batteries. Or I run uh, shore power. Or I run my little generator. Ideally, the generator uh, works ideal uh, with that setup. But one day when I upgrade this battery, I'm going to make sure I get a battery that can handle a minimum at least 200 plus discharge continue. Now, this is continuous. Okay, so don't get confused with that with some of the... You go to some of these websites, like you go to iTech World and it's got something plastered there. 275 amps discharge you know for what for two three seconds it'll only handle that for two three seconds then it's got 175 amps and it'll handle that for five minutes then the important one 150 amps okay it says continuous now i've run tests on this guys i've never been able to get 150 amps out of this because to be fair i've mainly been using it over the summer months at that rate so whether it's the heat that's causing the issue, I don't know. The best I can get out of it's about 130, 140. I found at 150 continuous discharge, it starts to overheat the battery quite a lot. In fact, it got to the point where one day I had to turn it off so it wouldn't shut down the BMS. It must have been very close to shutting down the BMS. Now I have some theories on that, guys. I have some theories. Another thing is thinking it could be resistance. It could be resistance because I've got like Now let me explain to you something. I know this video is on guys this I know the last video is 40 minutes long But as I mentioned before I didn't speak about sausage rolls for 40 minutes so I think 
this is a great opportunity. These are good videos. It's like a blog. So this is a good video while I'm using these components to explain a few things on how it works and what I'm using and why I choose. In fact, I can feel some heat starting to come out of there now. How long has this been cooking for now? So it's half an hour, so it's just starting to generate some heat now. Now, on the positive, so the first one I got connected on is the, the huge lug for the Multi Plus, which is 70 mil square cable. And then the next one is for the Egon DC hub, which I think it's about 35 mil square cable and then the next one above that is the one for the battery temperature so which records the temperature for my BMV 712 so it's a Victron so they're in that range now because the battery sensors right on the top of that it's going to have more resistance than what the other one says so it's really important that you got minimum resistance where your connections are because that's a killer of 12 volt systems and 240 volt systems is if you don't have a good connection you're going to build up resistance and what does the resistance equal heat and if it gets hot enough, it's potential to catch fire. So that time when I was testing out and running continuous 150 amps on this, and I saw the battery terminals, the, the, the reading was going up to about 78 degrees Celsius. I bet you the battery itself was a lot cooler. So the way the BMV 712, when you purchase your optional battery monitor it actually connects to the battery terminal okay so it looks like a battery lug and that's where it has to connect to so it's got to be on the positive terminal so if you've got some resistance in where those connections are then that's going to reflect on that temperature reading and it's not going to give you an accurate reading so I'm thinking for that reason I'm going to do some changes I'm going to put like a separate bus bar so I've only got the one major cable it's a thick cable I'll get something that's around 70 mil square and that'll go straight to the battery and then off that there'll be a short lead and then I'll run a bus bar now Victron make a really good one I think it's called a Lynx or something so in fact while this is cooking, after we finish talking about this, I'm going to jump on my computer and have a look and do some research and see how much they are. And I might even shoot up town this afternoon and go get one of those and incorporate it. But it also uses those mega fuses inside. So you've got about four or five different connections on there. We can use separate mega fuses. So instead of running those, well, those positives, even though in my case there's only there's only three well it's probably it's interesting actually because the one for the battery is going to have to stay on the battery terminal so we're really only doing away with the one so I'm gonna have to do some research maybe when I, I'll shoot off and go to my local Victron dealership and have a yarn to them about this and see what their opinion is I might actually do that this afternoon and look further into it and see what they think is it worthwhile me actually getting one of those links distributed box of things because it's really only going to do away with one cable but there is quite a fair bit of what I think could be resistance there I don't think the battery is getting as hot as that so guys we're going to do a different separate video on that and we'll check that out later so guys, I don't want this video to be as long as one, two days ago. <laughs> we'll try to keep it short, but I think you'll find this is a very interesting video. 
Right, so this has got about two hours to go before it's fully cooked. So in about an hour and a half, let's say 11.30, we're going to go and come back and we'll start cooking the meat pie in the air fryer. We'll set that up. Hey guys, welcome back. It's uh, 11.27 a.m. So this has been going for two hours. It's nice and warm. I reckon give it another 10-15 minutes. I think I'll check that. So like I said before, I normally cook for two hours. But because we're not in the car, because the this is not getting as hot as it normally, that's the theory I'm working on. I'm suspecting that it'll need another 15-20 minutes. But that'll give me enough time to start cooking the other meat pie in the air fryer oven. So let's do that now. Now I'm going to turn the fridge off for this test so that it doesn't affect the power drawer that's coming out of the, the battery. Turn the inverter on. So you see how easy that is. Now it's inverting. There we go. So we'll, so we'll set that on about 23 minutes and uh, we'll come back and check it soon. So, cheers. Hey, welcome back, guys. It's time. I've just come back. It is 11.53 a.m. The oven has switched off, so I know it's been on for two hours. So hopefully this is cooked. In fact, it's probably fit, switched off about nearly 20 minutes ago. So I probably should have came here and checked it. Forgot about the timer. Maximum you can set these on for, for two hours. But there should be enough heat generated. It's still quite hot here. So there'll be enough heat there that should be keep cooking that. The air fryer is switched off. So remember I had that set on about 23 minutes. So that looks perfect actually. So that's 23 minutes. And guys, let me grab a plate here. And let's check this out. Oh, look at that. We'll bring it up closer to the camera shortly. I want to make sure we don't mix them up. So let me turn this off. And switch off the inverter. So. Have a look at that. Nice and crispy, not too crispy. I reckon that's cooked perfectly. How nice does that look, guys, for a frozen pie? So, this is gonna be the big test now. Hopefully this one's cooked. Oh yeah, look at that. So that's, that's not too bad, I'll just put on another plate right here I've got behind me. So that is the one that's cooked in the air fryer. So you can see that there. Very nicely cooked. Let's now, let's now have a look 
at the one. Oh, that's hot. Let's try this again. So that's the one that's cooked in the 12, 12 volt travel buddy oven. So go grab a, a knife and compare the two. Hey, first one I just cut open guys. This one here is the one that's cooked in the travel buddy. So, I don't know if you can see that. Have a look at those nice chunky pieces. Yep. Two hours, that's perfect. So let's check the other one. I think it needs a bit longer. Yep. So I'm gonna put that back in here, guys. What are we down to? We're down to 81%. So that was cooking for 23 minutes and we're down to 81%. I've got the fridge on now, but uh, that won't make any difference. We're we just need to give this a, a blast of probably a few more minutes. So I'll put it on the inverter only. Now that's on inverter. If I remember we had 23 minutes, I'm gonna give it another five minutes, probably seven minutes, I'd say half an hour. I'll give it another seven minutes. Now just to make sure I don't muck up the setting, the consumption, I will turn the fridge back off. So while we're waiting for that to finish cooking, I'm just gonna go shoot off over here and see how much we're drawing out the battery here to cook this pie. Okay, so there. So that battery is down to 83%. So we know it's a 120 amp battery. So 10% of that is 12 amp. Half of that you're looking at 18 amps. So another 2%. I think we're looking at around about 21 amps. Thereabouts, 21, 22 amps. So, which isn't too bad. 21, 22 amps. So this one here, we would have drawn, so what's it at now? 80% now, still cooking mind ya. So 10%, so we're looking at 20 and a half amps so far that that one's drawn. It is, at this stage, it's around about the same. Now unfortunately because that's cooled down, uh, that's just got to cycle back up to heat again. So if I had that air fryer set properly before and I had it set for half an hour, I, I'd say we would have used less power. But now this thing's going to use a bit more power to bring that temperature back up. So it's not going to give me a very accurate, as accurate data as what we would have had if I had it set on half an hour before. But two hours definitely seems to be ideal for this even though we're not running one of those boosters that boost the voltages up over 13 volts. Now if you're using lithium on this, of course the lithiums are at a higher voltage. So these are going to run better on a lithium battery than they will, I think, on an AGM battery. So we'll put that to test one day. Next test we'll do, we'll just use the travel buddy and I'll connect it up to my lithium battery and we'll see how well it cooks what the difference is with that slightly more voltage that you can get out of a lithium battery over what you can get with the AGM battery so so now guys this has got a few more minutes to go so we'll come back when it's cooked okay guys that's just switched off now so it's been going for about an extra five minutes and the battery's down 75%. So pretty much consistent, similar power consumption 
as what yesterday is. 1% per minute. With this taste the difference air fryer. So what do you reckon? That's steaming. Look how, look how nice and big pieces of beef and this solid piece. Love that. Mmm. This is a really nice pie, guys. Really. It's a bit hot to eat it at the moment. I'll do my best. This needs a bit of sauce, not ketchup, sauce, we call it sauce. I'm in the barbecue sauce, I like my barbecue sauce. So not ketchup, we don't call it ketchup. <laughs> you know who I'm talking to? <laughs> we don't call it ketchup, do you? We call it, what do you guys call ketchup? <coughs> Excuse me, I went down the wrong way. What do you guys call ketchup? We call barbecue sauce. No, no, we actually call tomato sauce. It's known as tomato sauce here. But I like barbecue sauce. I'm a barbecue sauce man. So, before this gets too cold, I'm going to go bring it in the house and enjoy this. So we'll close this video off. And I'll go and put some barbecue sauce on here, not ketchup, barbecue sauce. Got that right? <laughs> I'm just having a go at someone who's <laughs> trying to tell me it's ketchup. It's not tomato sauce, it's ketchup. Nah, you're wrong, mate. It's not ketchup, it's tomato sauce. My case, barbecue sauce. <laughs> oh God. So that's another good success. So, 25%. Battery's down 25% and I cooked the meat pie. In my air fryer. Which is 10, 10. Uh, just working out the power consumption. Just bear with me. It looks like we've gone through about 26, 27 amps. So it's about 23, 24 amps that we consumed this one here out of my kick-ass AGM battery. 26 amps consumed out of this one. And it probably would have been the same if I didn't have to turn it back on and let it preheat again. So yesterday was the same. I'd say today is the same as well. This should cool down enough to meet it. Now that's still really warm. Oh. 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 Excuse me. Woo. That's so hot. Hmm. Should do the three bite test. Sorry, back. It's too hot to do the three by test. I'll tell you what, girl. I'm going to get one more. So that's three bites, guys. That's good. The only thing that pie's missing. It's some um, mashed potatoes with peas. Very rare, guys. Very rare, guys. I ever buy any pies. Extremely rare. But when I do, I like to go to a bakery that's down the road from me. There's this couple that are from England. And all they do is just pies. And you can buy them fresh every day. I think. Last time I went, they were about 
six dollars each or something but you can get them with mashed potatoes in it and peas oh boy they're nice in fact i should go there one day and do my own little bit of a pie review and try their pies <laughs> that might be a thought for another video eh so guys till then it's getting pretty warm in the garage so i want to get in the house and finish eating this off and i'm going to edit this this afternoon so it'll be ready for you guys to view tonight so as you're watching this today this is filmed today so guys as always be kind to everyone look after yourself go out and enjoy yourself go camping particularly now with this little bit cooler weather now it's getting close to our to our camping weather at least up here in queensland it is i notice you guys down south are starting to wear jumpers <laughs> how cool is that so guys please subscribe put a like on the videos anything you want to know about anything you see here just ask below in the comments and i'll answer i answer everyone and till next time cheers look after yourself cheers